I don't know about you, but I'm always on the search for the perfect palette. I don't quite know what perfect looks like, but for some reason I think if I buy just one more, it's going to be the perfect one. Of course this is never the case, so I end up with lots of palettes that I don't use. So in this video I'm going to show you all these palettes. Starting off with the cheapest one, this is just a little plastic palette I picked up from the art store. It cost about 10 baht, which in British money is about 20p, 25p. Uh, I mostly use these just for testing out random colours. Uh, I have three or four of them which I just stack together and then put an elastic band around them. Next I have this plastic one which says Samina Art on it. Um, I got this from AliExpress. I think it's actually meant for acrylic, but I don't see why it wouldn't work with watercolour. Next I have this big plastic palette which I think you can get pretty much in any art store in pretty much any country. It's quite cheap too I think uh, and as you can see I use it a lot. I was going to clean it before showing it to you all but I'm too lazy. This next one is kind of interesting. It's not really a palette, it's more just mixing spaces. It folds out and on one side you got small mixing spaces and on the other side you got slightly larger ones. It also has a sponge on the top and the bottom which I assume is for drying your brush off. Next is a new palette which I've only recently got. Uh, I like the look of it because it's so flat. The branding on it says Mia. I've never heard of that brand before. Uh, it's a 21 well palette and it's got this nice flat mixing space. The plastic does look a bit glossy though, so I'm not sure how nice it will be to mix on. So that's all the cheap plastic palettes. Now we can take a look at the metal ones. So first we got this type of metal palette that pretty much everyone's used, pretty much every brand sells. Um, this is a nice teal version. I never use it, of course. Many versions of this palette have a thumb ring on the bottom for when you're holding the palette in your hand. I like that this is just a flat mixing space. The next one is this nice yellow orange palette from Schmincke. Uh, I think this originally came with Academy, uh, which is the student grade paints inside it. Uh, I, I think it was supposed to be limited edition, but I can't remember. Next is a larger one of these standard black metal palettes. Uh, this is the kind of one that usually holds 48 half pans. I just use it to keep my old Van Gogh paints in these days. Now onto some aluminium palettes. This first one is made by Hung Il. I think they're a Korean brand um, and you can get these ones in all different sizes. I think this is the smallest one they have. Clearly it's a copy of or at least heavily influenced by the Holman palettes. But it is of course aluminium and it's a whole lot cheaper. At the moment I keep my cam supervision paints in it. I have another much larger aluminium palette. This one's made by Shinhan. It's got 34 wells or something ridiculous like that. There's far too many colours for me but I guess if you're someone who likes a lot of colours available then it'll be perfect. I've no idea if Shinhan still make this palette or not. I've not seen anyone else using it or seen any reviews online about it but it is nice quality I really like it this next one is a little travel sketches palette from Kurataki it looks like it's kind of their version of the Winsor Newton field box just not as good it's filled with 12 half pans comes with this water bottle a brush a pencil the thing that really lets it down though is the mixing space is it's just too small now I'm going to show you the palettes that I do use regularly. The first is this Magello. Uh, this contains pretty much all the Magello paints I own. I get horribly confused every time I look at it. It's way too many colours for me and it gives me a headache. But it is good to have them all in one place in case I want to do colour swatching for a YouTube video or something. And now we come on to the lovely John Pike palette. 
I'd say this is probably my favourite palette. In fact, probably my perfect palette. I love all this big, huge mixing space. I really love that it has these nice big paint wells. You can get larger brushes in quite easily. Uh, this is mostly full of Lucas and Schmincke paints at the moment. I think I've shown you these two handmade wooden palettes that I've got. These were handmade by a guy in Thailand. And um, yeah, they're pretty cute. I think I quite like them for, you know, sketching outdoors. I've already filled this eight color palette. It's, well, I guess it's quite a weird combination. I like it, some of you might not. I've got raw sienna, light red, phthalo blue red shade, burnt umber, burnt sienna. I really don't like this Magello dark burnt sienna. It sets like a rock and is really hard to re-wet. Then I've got carmine, indigo, and some sepia for things like value studies. This is my Magello Silver class palette. The silvers are Magello student grade. Their artist grade is uh, Mission Gold. To be honest, I can't tell a whole lot of difference with the way I paint. So um, I think I'm just gonna use up the silver colors that are in there and eventually replace them with whatever. The colors I got in here at the moment are Lemon Yellow, Yellow Deep. Uh, this is a Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Yellow, which I added. Then I've got Vermilion, and I've got Permanent Red, and I've got Permanent Red Violet, which is another Rembrandt color I added. I've got this tiny little pan of um, a Van Gogh Azo Green Yellow, I think it's called. I think the pigment's PY129. Something like that. Then along the bottom I've got what Mijello calls Cerulean Blue, but normal people call Philo Blue Green Shade. Then it's actual Cerulean Blue, which is another Rembrandt colour I added. Then we have Ultramarine and Philo Green, that's a PG7. And then there's another Rembrandt, which is Chromium Oxide Green. Then there's Olive Green, Red Brown, which is a Magello Mission Gold color I added. And finally, Van Dyke Brown. I really do like this palette a lot. It's uh, nice and compact and really solidly built. And I like the design of the pans as well. I, I find it much easier to get into them than normal half pans and I think it's much less likely to damage your brush. And while there's not a huge amount of mixing space, I think there's enough for sketchbook work and stuff like that. And I do like the fact that the mixing space is deep, so if you want a watery mix you can. And the final palette I want to show you is my main landscape palette. This is the one I use maybe 90% of the time. It's made by Frank Herring. I think it's called the Frank Herring Compact Palette and I got it from Jackson's. There are two versions of this palette you can get. One takes 16 half pans and there's also space for a brush. And then there's this one which originally takes 12 full pans. But mine has been quite heavily modified. I've chopped bits out and stuck bits in so I've ended up with seven extra large wells and space for two full pans. The colors I got in here are Indian Red, Light Oxide Red, Burnt Sienna, Thalo Blue Red Shade, Cobalt Blue, Ains Grey, Raw Umber, Cadmium Yellow Lemon, and Cadmium Red Medium. I like how this palette has nice bowl shaped mixing wells so you can make some really wet mixes if you want to. I do really like the build quality as well. Um, it feels pretty solid and I've had it maybe 18 months now and I, I've painted with it pretty much every single day and it's holding up just fine. Just an odd scratch here and there. This Velcro that I've stuck to the back of the palette serves two purposes. First, it covers up the horrible mess I made when I was filling in the original thumb hole that was there. And secondly, it allows me to stick it to my drawing board, which is very useful when I'm painting outdoors. I really have enjoyed using this palette over the last year and a bit, and especially with the modifications I've done, because 
I like using bigger brushes um, and really nine pigments is all I need for the kind of landscapes I do. And if I decide that I want to paint any different subjects, I can just use my Magello set. So there you go, that's all the palettes I have. Clearly it's way too many, but uh, what can you do? So what about you? Are you a palette hoarder or are you good and stick to one or two? Or are there any palettes on your wish list that you haven't quite pulled the trigger on yet? I keep looking at that remake of the Fraser Price palette that Jackson's is selling at the moment. Obviously I don't need it, but for some reason I want it. There's no harm in getting one more palette, is there? Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.